We've um, got a little more to do on renewables here. Yeah, just have, have a seat. Oh, here? Yeah, there we go. That's okay. There we go. Okay, so um, just briefly, uh, I wanted to explain to everyone that after lunch today, we're going to have our uh, sustainable solutions sessions. Uh, these are workshops. We're going to roll up our sleeves. We've never done this before. It's really new. I don't know if it's going to work. I hope it works. But the idea is that we're going to try to come up with some real solutions to a lot of the issues we're talking about in this panel right now. And uh, David's leading our sustainable solutions session on uh, solar power. And the challenge is, how do you get solar power on 50% of US roofs by uh, 2018 in five years? And David, you're deep into this, this field. Uh, you believe in it. You're investing in it. Um, can you just sketch out some of the issues we're going to be discussing in this workshop, some of the challenges we're facing to meet that 50% uh, target? Well, uh, what I would say is, um, you know, uh, fortunately in the United States, and this is a very domestic uh, thought, you know, so I don't know if it applies to Europe or other places, but we, we have a big country. And uh, we, we invest in a, a company called Geostellar that does 3D uh, mapping of people's roofs and things. And, and I asked them, I said, how many buildings in the United States should have solar power on the roof? You know, and I said 50 million. 50 million buildings in the United States uh, are right for that. And that does, Out of how many? Buildings? Well, I think there's, uh, there's 80 million uh, standalone homes and I think 120 million total buildings in the United States, okay. rough numbers. Okay. But, but uh, so 50 million, and, that does, and then that doesn't even start to talk about the fact that you know, we are a automotive culture, so everywhere there are parking lots and everywhere there are driveways and things like that. And mm -hmm. th this is all, to me, you know, a uh, place where there's good solar insulation. And, and, and because, as you know, we believe that one of the problems with rooftop solar is the roof, you know, mm -hmm. we'd like to do something They're else. never facing the right uh, direction, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. They weren't designed. Right. I mean, you show me which American home 30 years ago was built with the, the guy saying 30 years from now, you know, someone's going to come along with a cheap solar panel. But we've, uh, to me, there are a lot of benefits to solar power beyond, uh, you know, I mean, there's the, the green benefit, there's, you know, shade, shelter, uh, you know, it's an advertisement that you're being green and, and that's good in a, in a society that's prizing. You know, after Sandy, we're, we're also designing the solar canopy out there is also designed to work when the grid doesn't so that we can actually tie renewables with backup generation. So Will you explain to the audience what the solar canopy is? Well, the solar canopy, which it. is outside, is basically, as I was saying before, after Superstorm Sandy, I challenged our solar people and say, you know, what are we going to do about this? Uh, New Jersey has the second most solar installations of any state in the country, and all of them, I think of the 17,000, 16,900 went down with the system. Mm -hmm. And none of them were physically damaged. They just went down because they were wired Right. to be uh, parallel to the grid. Is that because they would generate electricity that would go into the grid and workmen would get electrocuted? I had read that someplace. Is that well, true? as I understand it, and you know, I went to law school, that the reason that the grid companies lo don't like solar to operate is because they're worried about the safety of their linemen and, and yep. women. And, and look, n no one, our company, safety before everything, but there are other ways. There's mm -hmm. ways to protect. And, and I think as a practical matter, to have a solar installation that doesn't um, to go down with grid, you need to have a multi-phase inverter, yeah. which until now has been an $8,000 piece of equipment, which, mm -hmm. which seems and is you know, too expensive for the average household. So, right. so, uh, but, so, but we think that that can be engineered a lot cheaper and you can give solar you know, uh, the ability to work when the grid's not. So that's another benefit. Mm -hmm. But ultimately what it comes down to, if we're talking about the challenge here, 50% of American homes or even 50% of homes you know, should either have rooftop solar or distributed solar. It still comes down to the age-old question that, for the most part, side benefits aside, all anyone cares about in the electricity world is price. Right. And we still have this fundamental issue in the United States. The solar module people have done their job. In fact, they've overdone the job. Right. You know, solar module is now priced in the United States at 60 cents a watt. Right. You know, people, some Citibank analysts said they're on their way down to 25 cents right. a watt, which I'm sure strikes yeah. fear in the Just heart of them. Just to put that in perspective, the 1970s was around $100 a watt. Yeah, well, I mean, it, I mean I've mean, i often wondered why the Obama administration, I mean, I think on the first day of the Obama administration, they were 5 or $6. Right. So I don't know why the Obama administration just doesn't declare victory. He said, look, we caused it. 
whether they caused it or not. I think it was the Chinese yeah. or something. To do yeah, with but it, right? still, still, I mean, whatever kept politicians from not taking credit for things that happened on their watch. So, so basically, solar modules are now one tenth the price they were five years right. ago. Uh, and so, if we talk at whether and on the average solar installation in the United States distributed, the solar module itself is only 10 to 15 percent of the overall cost of installation. Right. So we have this fundamental price problem that the solar module price is exactly where it needs to be, 25, 50, 60 cents a watt. But we're looking at, depending on where you are, $4, $5, $6 a watt fully installed still. Yeah. And balance of plan, friction costs, sales acquisition costs, all this stuff is, right. is basically- Permitting keep, costs. Yeah, it's keeping yeah. solar at a price where it only makes economic sense if we're being honest with each other in Hawaii and for the people in California paying the top tier in their three tier or four tier right. retail rate. And if we're gonna get solar on 50% of the house, I think our goal has to be somewhere a dollar 20 a watt all in off of, let's say a 50 cent panel seems to me something we should be able to aspire to. Dollar mm -hmm. 20 a watt sort of translates into seven, eight cents per kilowatt hour. That'll work anywhere in the country. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can't sell that, and then we have the big psychological change that I think we need as a country where the question, right now, even in New Jersey, like where I live and there are a lot of people have solar panels, you still go around and say, hey, Joe has solar panels on the roof and it's, it's, it's an oddity. Right. We need to get to the situation in this country where it's not, oh, why do you have solar on, on your roof? It's why don't you have solar on you? Mm -hmm. well, are you so stupid that you don't realize that you're paying this utility to bring this dirty power from far away when you actually have the ability to monetize your solar resource Mm -hmm. um, you know, at a price that's cheaper than, than getting... So how close are we to that price point now? Well, I mean, to me, the hard work's been done by the solar modules guy with the chemistry and all, and all that stuff. So I, it seems to me balance of plan, friction costs, all this stuff. I mean, that's, I think that's the goal of this afternoon. Isn't right, it, is it, that it we're is gonna indeed. Put, we're going to put all the bright minds at work in this room to sort of say, what, let's identify those costs and figure out what are the novel ways... Mm -hmm. You know, I'll just tell you one thing that I've wrestled with with absolutely no success is that if you take a community, let's just say it's a subdivision anywhere in America and 50 houses, and they all have southern facing roofs, you know, right for solar. And if those 50 homeowners made a decision one a week for a year to put solar on their uh, uh, house, that would cost us X. If they all made the decision on the same day, without even penciling any numbers out, I would offer them a 50% discount. Huh. Because if we could just move white vans, you know, 50 houses at a time, you know, yeah. and, and if, economy we could, of scale, if we yeah. could go down to the township with 50 pieces of paper asking for the license permit, but, but you know, the individual decision making, uh, that's just one thing on the, on the acquisition call. And the distributed solar people who are in the room know this better than I do. Mm -hmm. And they're working on this and all that. But I think there's a lot of room here to identify different aspects of the, the value chain. But if we can drive that cost down to $1.15 to $1.15 and do it sooner rather than later, yeah. I think we're looking at a completely different So you different think we world. can do it, it's just that we don't have the right system in place and the right businesses in place to achieve that. I mean, it's doable. We don't need any sort of technological breakthrough. No, I mean, it's, it's friction system. cost. I mean, I would tell you one of the things that we've wrestled, because I, I participate in the XPRIZE thing and all that, and we've played with the idea of sponsoring a $10 million XPRIZE for called Next Day Solar. Mm -hmm. And it would be aimed at municipalities. And the municipality that could work with their private sectors so that if someone made a decision to order solar at 9 o'clock in the morning, that they would have it installed by the next day. Hmm. Because one of the reasons that, I mean, look at the difference between the United States and Germany, uh, is that um, in Germany, uh, where they pay the same amount for the solar panels, but the cost of, of installation of solar is, I mean, the all-in cost installed distributed solar, I think is $2, 250 mm -hmm. as opposed to 455 And that's and, in and, Germany. And that's in Germany. And you know when you say, you know what the time is, is like it's eight days from the day you order in Germany to the day you're fully installed. Mm -hmm. And we're at 120 to 150 days or in yeah. that range. I, I just called a solar installer from my house in New York, and I got a four to six month estimate on how Yeah, I mean, yeah. This, this is a country that's based on immediate gratification. I mean, you can buy a house, you can buy, I mean, <laughs> there's nothing that takes longer to buy than the distributed solar. And, and so, I mean, just working through the timetable so that people actually get what they want, 
uh, you know, maybe in the same season that they order. You know, it's same like, year would be nice. It's like yeah. you know, buy a ski house in Colorado in September so you can ski, and you and you close in March. March, March. You know, yeah, right. That's right. basically what the solar industry offers the United right. States public. Right. Now. Okay, we've run out of time. Those are the kind of fascinating issues we're going to grapple in our sustainable uh, solutions session. Let's hear it for David Crane. David, thank you so much. Thank that was you. terrific. Thanks,